Harley Davidson has a really big issue with the new 2024 motorcycles. That's what we're going to talk about today as I give you my opinion on where I see this all going, not only on the new bikes, but on the 2023 models as well. Now, of course, after the video, I want to hear from y'all. If you have any insight, maybe you work at a dealership, maybe you kind of, you know, see things from a different perspective, whatever your opinion is, I want to hear it down below after the video. And of course, if you like what I do, consider subscribing. You can also join us on Patreon or join the channel right here. Looking for our first 10 members on both gain access to some pretty cool perks and I made some badges up for y'all as well. Speaking of that really quick uh, plug and then we'll get on to the video. I made some new merch designs. Finally, got some merch here on the Headshot Rides channel. Not only do I have some coming for myself, but I made some for y'all as well and they are still on sale. So pretty awesome designs. Hopefully you guys will like them as well. I'll make sure I leave a link in the description box so it's super easy to find. Let's go and get into it. Let's start off with the obvious, man. When Harley makes a big change, no matter if you love it or hate it, people are talking about it. When we look at years past, you have the 60 degree revolution motor that was liquid cooled, that was put into the V-rods, and Harley purists looked at that bike with straight up contempt. And anybody that rode that bike, and I'll be honest with you, it's not my favorite looking motorcycle, but when I had a chance to ride the V-Rod, I actually kind of liked it for what it was. Uh, but even at the same time, when they got rid of the traditional Sportster, right? Come out with the Sportster S, the Pan America, <laughs> you know, uh, you know the, the, the looming rumors of the Bronx at one time, right? People are like, what the hell is Harley doing? They discontinued the Road Glide for a year and then it came back you know, totally redesigned and eventually took the place of the best selling motorcycle in the touring lineup anyways, and actually took the crown from the Batwing. When Harley got rid of the Dyna, that was a big deal. When 2018 happened and, you know, they were sending bikes to everybody from, you know, musicians to actors and some regular people too, uh, you know, that was, that was them trying to get people talking about it. And let's be honest, it worked. And although I think the Dyna is a pretty good example, this year is just totally different. What, it, what seems to happen, at least from my perspective, anecdotal or not, is when you give people a little bit of time, maybe a year, maybe two, when you get people to actually ride the motorcycles and see them in person, that's when the perspective change. And, and that's when people actually will warm up to the newer designs and what Harley-Davidson does. And, and Harley knows this, right? And so when we look at the 24s now, we have this huge change between the road and the street glide, but we still have the Ultra and the Road Glide Limited, which retain all of the older features. And I, I really think that this started with the Road Glide ST and the Street Glide ST. So that was kind of, for lack of better terms, a soft launch into this performance bagger market that they knew was popping off. Harley pays attention to this stuff. That's how the Street Glide came about, right? You know, Harley noticed, man, all these guys with Electra Glides are taking the bags off and lowering them and just kind of simplifying the design. No, oh, they come out with the Street Glide and that became the best selling bike for a long time. And then that brings us full circle to this year. This year is different though, because not only do we have a huge redesign in the bikes, we also have a price decrease. Now this is dependent upon who you are, because if you're used to buying the standard version of the street and the road glide, you may see this as, oh man, I got to spend more money now to get this stuff. But considering what these bikes come with, with all of the rider aids, the screen, everything that we've talked about here on this channel, uh, it's actually a pretty good bargain. And I say bargain, $26,000 is nothing to sneeze at, but still, this is not a step in the price increase. It is more of a decrease when you take all of the features and everything combined. So while the barrier to entry may be a bit higher than those standard models, uh, it still is quite a bit cheaper if you were to build out a standard and get it up to the point where the regular road and street glide are now. 
If you're somebody that is used to the specials, now you really see this as a bargain starting at 26, right? You had black pipes, you had whiskey fire, similar to what I did. And now you're sitting at, you know, 28. But one thing we didn't have before is the RDRS already included in that. That was like a $1,200 upcharge for a couple of years. All of that to say that the prices, whether you look at them as a slight increase from the standards or actually going down considering everything that comes with the bikes, that now leaves the question, what happens to the older motorcycles? Now I can tell you straight up that the trade values have dropped significantly. And I, I kind of hate this, man, because it's it's almost like, you know, you you want people to trade up to the new bikes, but then you want to give them three to six thousand dollars less for their current bike. So do you really want them to trade up or do you not? Now, I understand when you take a bike in on trade, those older motorcycles actually should be worth less money. So you have to sell them for less, meaning you're going to have to give less for them but they've dropped off significantly. My hope is, is that at some point it will level back out, but I'm not too sure. So obviously you're gonna have a ton of used Harleys back on the market. You already have a ton of used Harleys back on the market, but what about the new old stock in the 23s? We're talking about some of these bikes, the special versions of these bikes that are north of $30,000, $32,000 where you might go out the door with the, I don't know, a street glide blacked out with some special paint out the door. You're at 29 after everything. Let's just say that's just a guess. Whereas maybe the 23 model, let's say a, a maybe a fast Johnny or the ST versions, you're going to be 32, 33, maybe even 34,000. So in my mind, why would anybody buy the older models that are more money that are going to trade in for less money? as soon as you buy that thing anyways, over the new ones that come with all the new technology. And I think there are a couple of legitimate reasons for this. The first one being is the interest rate on the newer motorcycles. You're not going to get that 1.99%, right? Harley started running this deal on 23s and that is actually an insane interest rate at any period, but especially right now you're not gonna get that interest rate on the new motorcycles, nor will you get them on the 23 CVOs, right? That's gonna be exclusive to the 23 base specials and ultras, your Fast Johnnies, your STs. So that may be enough to sell it in and of itself, but also, let's be honest, some people just don't like the styling of these new bikes. Some people look at them like, you know, they, they, they've turned them into an Indian, which is not the truth, I'll be comparing my road glide, my new road glide to the new Indian Challenger. And you can see just how different they are. And there might be slight similarities. But any, anyways, that's the perspective that some people have now. They see it as Harley going the way of Indian. And they're like, I just can't do it. I have a buddy of mine who thinks just like this. We went and looked at some bikes in Myrtle Beach. And he was like, it looks like an Indian. I hate it. In a year, maybe two. I think he'll change his mind. And actually, after he saw my bike in person, he was like, okay, this actually looks a lot better than what I was thinking. But regardless, there's gonna be some people and there's gonna be a, 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 a core group of riders that look at these new bikes with so much contempt that the, the glasses they have on and the perspective they have is gonna be, I would never buy one of the new 24s because they are just straight up ugly. And for those people, the 23s with a really awesome interest rate actually might look pretty appealing. Another thing you're gonna get with the older models is a reliable motorcycle, right? And I'm not saying that the 24s aren't reliable, but they're gonna have bugs, one of which I've already had. The no start issue, right? So software updates, these kinds of things are going to happen. There's gonna have to be bugs that are worked out and some people don't want to be ambassadors to a new motorcycle and kind of figure this stuff out with Harley. They would rather go with something that is reliable. And let's be honest, for as long as the new Rogue Glide has been out or the, the new old Rogue Glide, I should say, um, you know, oil pump with the Milwaukee 8, all of those things have been worked out. 
that is a heck of a reliable motorcycle. Even my 2020 Rogue Glide that I had with 35,000 and some change on it, I never doubted that motorcycle starting up. Now again, that's not to say that the 24s aren't reliable or won't be reliable. There's just things they're gonna have to work out along the way. When it comes to the styling, you know, there's a lot of people that still like the stretch saddlebags. I'm one of them. Like I said, before I went out to this Harley Davidson event, I had no plans in upgrading my motorcycle. And one of the things that I really clung to was the fact that I like stretch saddlebags. I still like stretch saddlebags, but then I saw the new bags and the capabilities, and trust me, your boy was trying to fit everything I possibly could into those bags when I was in Las Vegas, and I made it work. I stretched them to the limit, uh, no pun intended, uh, but literally, you know, I make sure nobody's around and, you know, just kind of jam them and close them. They will fit a lot more stuff in there, and that was one thing that was really appealing to me, but the aesthetic part of it as well, I typically do not like how the bags ride over the top of the pipes, but with some of the cuts and the contrasted lines they have in here, they look a heck of a lot better in person than what I saw online. Now, of course, you have the aftermarket as well. So if you don't want to go straight through Harley on your older road street glides, your road glide limited, you know, ultras, all of those bikes, you have aftermarket options. Now you will have that stuff with the new 24s eventually, uh, but right now you just don't have it. One thing I will say though is Harley obviously anticipated this. This is a huge part of motorcycling, no matter what you ride, but especially Harley Davidson's and cruisers. And so they have an entire lineup of parts already ready to go, right? They even have parts packages now you can buy. So if you're touring or you want to take your regular road glide to more of an ST model, they have all of that stuff. Now, one of the cool things is I'm a Harley affiliate now. So if you buy anything from their website, just by clicking on my link, I actually get a little bit of a kickback on it. So if you're already going to shop there, it actually helps me at the same time, which is cool. But regardless, the aftermarket will catch up with the new motorcycles. But if you just want to skip all of that and buy one of the established bikes now, you can obviously do that. Again, it's not going to take long for the aftermarket to catch up, especially with Harley Davidson. But Harley, in preparation for this, already came out with some pretty awesome packages. Again, even if you don't buy from my link, I'll link the store down below. You can check out all those packages for yourself. And so while I was thinking maybe this will be a huge deal for Harley, I guess there is enough of the, the, the market or the Harley purist enthusiast that just have not warmed up to the new bikes yet. And so even though they're there at a lower cost with more technology, there's some people that just don't want that. And I think there's a fairly strong case to be made for people to buy the older new stock, namely your 23s. And hell, even if you just want to go with the 24s, you have the Rogue Glide Limited and the Ultra Limited that you can still buy. And they might just like the looks of it better right now anyways. Again, people will eventually warm up to the new design. Me personally, I decided to trade in my old 2020 Rogue Glide for the new one because I really like almost everything that they've done with the new motorcycles and all of the upgrades and changes that I plan to do with this bike. I'm going to put them right here on the channel. Also, any of the long distance touring, any of the trips that I take, and of course, comparisons all right here as well. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you do that. Turn your notifications on. You could also sign up for my email and text messaging list. So if you don't get notifications here, I can get those notifications out to you whenever I put out a new video. Again, I'd really encourage you guys to check out the new merch that I have. Uh, pretty proud of it, and I think we came up with some pretty cool designs. If you'd like to see more content, early access, and other perks, you can join us on Patreon or join the channel right here. Or if you just want to check out another one of my videos, that'll be popping up on the screen as well. Big thanks to you guys. See you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.